Hello, everyone, and welcome to this week's L Chat on how a contract can actually improve your client experience. I'm really excited um, that my friend Christina Scalera is going to come on and join us um, today to tell us more about um, contracts, which can kind of be a scary thing, but it doesn't have to be scary. And hopefully, after this hour, um, you'll be a lot less intimidated. So I want to know where you all are tuning in from today and if you can hear me and see me okay before we get started. Um, awesome. Miami, Dallas, Texas, Nova Scotia, London. I love seeing this. Um, awesome. You can hear me. Thank you, Allie, for letting me know. Also, for those of you who are tuning into to Chat for the first time, anybody tuning in for the first time ever this week? Maybe? You can let me know in the comments as well. Awesome. Spain, Quebec. Yes, a few newbies. Awesome. So glad that you all are here. Um, just before we get started, I want to show you around this screen. So I use Crowdcast, and I love Crowdcast for hosting these LChat webinars every week. Um, a couple cool things. It looks like you all have found the comments already, um, and Christina is joining in there already, which is awesome. Um, but you found the comments, so feel free throughout this webinar to leave, um, to interact with other people in the comments and leave feedback. We always love seeing that. Uh, but also, there's a question and topic section. So right below the screen, if you scroll down, you should be able to see questions. Um, and feel free to go ahead and leave questions in there. Um, as we go, if you have questions as Christina and I are talking, feel free to leave questions in here. I usually try to leave about 15 or 20 minutes at the end of these L chats um, to ask Christina these questions so that we can work through them. We'll get through as many as we can before the end of the hour. Another cool thing about Crowdcast is that you can vote up your questions. So if you see questions that someone else has already asked um, and you really want to see it answered, you can vote it up and we'll answer those questions in order of the most votes. So, um, be sure to join in there. Um, I'm going to go ahead and invite Christina on. And while I'm inviting her on, let y'all know um, kind of how I came across Christina. Everyone knows who she is now. Um, but I got to meet Christina actually at the School of Styling um, a few months ago in Chapel Hill, or probably about a month ago now. There she is. I'm Hello. You guys on Instagram. Uh, <laughs> awesome. Um, Welcome. Thanks for joining us. I was just telling them how um, when I got to meet you in person and actually you were talking about contracts, your presentation was on contracts, and there were many things that I found out that I was doing wrong. And a lot of um, a lot of people can be intimidated by contracts. So I knew that I needed to bring you on and um, so that you could share your wisdom with the Ellen Company audience as well. So thank it's, you for joining. Oh me. my gosh! Thank you so much for having me. And it's it's um it's so great to be here. And it's such a great time of year to talk about contracts because the weddings are slowing down. And I know not everybody does weddings here, yeah. but you know, um, hopefully you're able to slip between now and next week. Which, if you didn't realize, in the U.S. is Thanksgiving, which is kind of a big deal. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm really excited to talk to everybody today and, um, it's, it's a great time to be doing some reflection and some investing and some, um, you know, whether it's time or money in your business and just take a minute, talk about what's going on and, and, uh, take a step back. That's great. Yeah. There's also, I know for me, I, I leave some time at the end of the year, the beginning of the year to kind of reevaluate and clean things up. So especially when it comes to contracts. And especially now that I've learned that I'm doing a few things wrong, um, going back and fixing things um, so that just in case something happens, I'm covered. Um, so, yeah, for yeah. sure. <laughs> yeah. So how, um, um, let's let's just ask the audience. What? So I know I asked, what are you guys using for your contracts right now? Hello Bonsai, HoneyBook. If, I saw some. Yeah. Book. Allie is super sweet in telling people to refresh. Yes, that's good. If, if you lose this at any point, just refresh and uh, yes. all is well. Awesome, Irene. I'm glad it's working now. So um, before we get started, what are y'all using? You, you asked what are they using for their contracts? Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm interested to see if people are, are doing electronic contracts or if they're sending PDFs or what's going on. And um, Adobe Sign, paper contract. 
That's good to know. I know personally, I use 17 hats. I started with 17 hats. Um, I recommended them in a blog post. And apparently for every person who went through that link, um, I get a free month of 17 hats. So I think I have 17 hats for life. (laughs) So now, um, because they have an e-sign feature, um, I use them for, yeah, I use them for contracts. Hello sign is what um, Mishia said. Adobe sign. Awesome. So this is good to know. Um, so Christina, before we dive into all the content, I, I want to know how you got started. Well, I already know, but I want them to know how you, how you got here, um, with your business. Yeah, for sure. I I would hope that it's, um, an encouraging story. I, a, a year ago, I didn't have any of this. So that's really exciting that I've been able to fortunately meet people like Lauren, who I was following for years. And, you know, she was such a girl crush of mine. So this is really cool to be here. Um, But yeah, I I was a a, a corporate lawyer and decided I wanted to change. I mean, like, raise your hand if that's your story. And uh, I decided I I wasn't a lawyer. but Right. Well, I mean, like working in corporate. (laughs) Yeah. Right. <laughs> and um, yeah, mm-hmm. I, I, I desperately needed a change and uh, for a couple of reasons and decided to go in the total opposite direction, the $100 startup by Chris Gillibo and was hold on the idea of, of like just bootstraps to. And uh, unfortunately, the business I decided to create was a private yoga business. So I was going to go to people's homes and teach them yoga uh, and charge a lot of money for it. And so that actually does not compute. So that that just didn't take off. But in the process, I had to do my own uh, graphic design. I unfortunately bought a custom website because I didn't know templates existed. Um, and so, but it's a good thing in the end because I got to see how they built this WordPress website from scratch on the back end. Mm-hmm. Um, so I learned a lot about building websites. So, you know, learned how to do all that kind of stuff on my own thought, like, what could I do? The rising tide society was just kind of coming up um, and they had just started and a lot of different conferences, workshops were getting out there, went to a couple of those realized like, well, for a while I thought I wanted to be a graphic designer, which fortunately for the world that didn't happen because I'm not great. <laughs> um, but <laughs> yeah. yeah, I mean, I thought I wanted to do everything, calligraphy, all, all these things that I really enjoyed to do. Doing. Um, and so I also along the way was encountering obviously all of these creative professionals like you guys and um, just seeing some of the struggles that they were, were having and there was a uh, pattern when they would find out I'm a lawyer oh my gosh this is happening oh my gosh this is happening and it always quickly revolved around contracts setting up their company um, and maybe some questions about their client relationships and those things I could help people with and it felt really good. And I could also do things like go to the national stationery show and, um, for a client and, and, you know, do like keep blogging and writing about business and writing about legal topics, which I love to blog. Um, and so I could continue to do the things that I loved just in a different capacity that supported others. And so it was a win, win, win for everybody and, and myself, obviously. Um, so that's, that's how I got started. And, uh, now I've been helping, literally at this point, hundreds of creative entrepreneurs with contract templates or one-on-one legal services or business strategy, um, you know, all kinds of different things that, that are just really helpful for them to move their business along and take it to the next level. And, and um, so, yeah, for everybody out there that's like, oh, then it will <laughs> blog. <laughs> Yeah. Well, and I love too that you have experience in both the creative side of things and legal. So yeah. um, it's extremely helpful for all of you who are tuning in today. Um, Christina has awesome wisdom to share with us today, especially about contracts and how they can actually, they're not so scary um, and that they can actually improve your client experience. So let's just dive yeah, right in. Are you ready? For sure. All right. So let's start with why are contracts actually not so scary? Yeah, contracts aren't really that scary. And I know you guys are like, oh, whatever, you're a lawyer. Like, of course, they're not scary <laughs> to you. Um, but, you know, they're really not scary to me because of the way that I look at it. And I encourage you guys to reframe them in your own mind, in your own business like that. And the way that I look at contracts is they're an agreement. They're a relationship with another person or people. Um, so, you know, we're not serving a client, we're serving a person. We're not just 
working with another vendor, we're actually collaborating and creating something really beautiful or helpful or unique in this world. And so mm -hmm. I know that's like kind of like a way to think about it, but I really, I would encourage people to think about contracts in a way that it, it's, it's a relationship builder. So what I mean by that is this document solidifies and, and list out the responsibilities of your relationship. And that's all it does. I mean, it's, it's not like set, you know, um, eternally condemning someone to a certain life path or whatever. And it's a list of what your expectations and your obligations are on both sides so that you have, you both have a really clear understanding of, um, you know, what it is that, that you're agreeing to do for sides. So for example, I will design your website and you, in exchange, you're going to pay me X amount of dollars and that's going to happen by date. And so that's all it is, is an agreement of, of what we're going to be doing together. Awesome. And so what are the circumstances where you need a contract? Um, there might be people here who don't have a contract yet and don't understand their need for it. So when do you need a contract? Yeah, this is a question. Uh, and the, it's a great question because contracts are inherently either not free and they're decent right or they're for like I don't know if this is okay like I just put this together from everything I found on Google um, and so it's it's always a question that I get is you know when is it the right time for me to invest really in a contract um, whether that's a time investment or a financial investment in a template or lawyer or whatever that looks like for you um, and the, the answer is always as soon as possible and uh, I know that that is kind of the worst answer ever you're like well no like what month of my business but it really is important this is the number one thing that I, I suggest that people have, right? Because this is even before you have your LLC, even before you have um, and clients, it's important to have a contract so that when you do get that first client, you're able to send your contract to them like that. And so, you know, if, if you don't have something in place, even if it's not the best, even if it's not what you're going to need months, if you don't have any anything to send them that could solidify and uh, memorialize that relationship into one solid place, then you're one not going to look professional, two scrambling around for a day or two to try to find if you may end up overspending. You know, you may hire an attorney, and that takes a long time. That costs a lot of money, and so instead you could just buy a template. Um, but again, even if you buy a template, you, you need to do some research and figure out what's the best template for your business, especially if it's, um, you know, like a hybrid business where you're doing graphic design and web design or, you know, a wedding planner that does florals. Like, what does that look like for you? And how do you create something that is a good fit for your business? So, you know, as soon as you can, starting to think about that contract, getting one, getting it into place, knowing you're going to make changes later. Um, but that it's just it's an upfront investment and um, you know even if you change your business later on down the road hopefully it's it's well written enough that you can just kind of use the services in it and continue to use it so as soon as possible it's it's the first thing I suggest business owners invest in yeah and so as soon as possible and you should be using a client con or a contract with every client right just make it a rule of thumb <laughs> to use a contract every time or how do you go about knowing when you need a contract? Yeah, if, if um, you don't care about getting paid, you don't care about what happens to your intellectual property, you know, if you're a graphic designer, you create a logo for them or you are a copywriter, you write copy for them. If you don't care what happens to that um, or you're a consultant and you share materials with them, you know, if, if you have no interest in the outcome, you don't care if they actually pay you, then you probably don't need a contract. But um, right. you know, if you want to get paid, if, if you want this to be a real working relationship where you have expectations and they're met, whether that's, you know, I'm doing this for you and I expect to be paid or um, I expect you to keep this confidential until we move further along in the project or whatever it is, when those expectations are there, it's a good idea to have a contract. And the other reason why you would have a contract um, is to continue to have a relationship with the other person or company on the other side of things. So. The, the way that this looks is if you don't have a contract in place, it's it's a he said, she said, well, in this email you said this and that and the other thing. The contract eliminates all that and it's a lot easier to have a conversation where you say, well, actually in this contract that you signed, you agreed to this um, versus a conversation where you are like, you're, you're saying, well, you know what, last May you said, that you were gonna pay me 500 now you're saying it's only three and I really need that $500 the contract gets rid of all of that you just say no you you agreed to pay me $500 by November so I, I need you to pay me <laughs> 
Um, so those right. are the relationship and then also the, um, you know, your interest coming out of it. So whether that's financial or some kind of intellectual property or some kind of process that you're sharing with the person, maybe they're an independent contractor for your business, like a VA, and you don't really want them going out and telling them, this is exactly how I run my business. Um, you know, if that's right. proprietary information to you, then, then they sign a non-disclosure agreement. They sign some kind of confidentiality clause in their independent contractor agreement um, so that if, if they go out and tell the world, you know, there's consequences and, and some pretty severe ones yeah. that they've agreed to. So those are the, the situations. Absolutely. Um, and two, something that we talked about, Christina actually joined me in module six of my freelance academy course to talk about the legal side of business and contracts. Um, and something that we discussed there too is that contracts make you look a lot more professional and get people to take you seriously. If you're having trouble in your client relationships where people aren't turning things in on time and not paying you, a lot of times it can come down to not having a contract because like you said, um, you can go back to that contract and say, no, this was due at this time. This is how much you were supposed to pay me. This is when you were supposed to pay me. Um, but not only that from the, because that sounds like contracts are only for us, but they also protect our clients as well. And they hold us accountable and set expectations. Um, yeah, that's exactly right. So where I see this happen a lot is, for example, things happen, right? Like I, I actually canceled my wedding. I broke up with my ex-fiance and um, I had booked some vendors. And so what happens there? You know, I had to go back and look and maybe I was in a different mindset than I was when I signed the contracts. But, uh, you know, that, that was a really big help for me to not be guessing at what I was losing. It was, it was very nice and reassuring mm -hmm. for me as a client, uh, to go back and say at one o'clock in the morning or whatever time it was to look at these contracts that I had signed and say, Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I got me back. Oh, I don't get money back. Um, right. and you start moving on and, and planning from there. And so maybe, maybe the situation in your example and your situation is not as extreme. It's not like a broken wedding or whatever, but, um, maybe it's a graphic design client that you just work with anymore. They just, they maybe lied to you or they're not giving you things on time. Um, and so mm -hmm. going back to your contract and saying, listen, I can cancel this contract without a refund to you because you're not giving me things on time when you're supposed to. And so it's holding up my other clients. It's driving me nuts. Um, you know, whatever the situation is, just having something in the contract that is uh, something that you can go back and rely on is, is always more helpful than, than just blaming your clients for not getting things to you and, and looking unprofessional. Yeah. I know too, I've had some people ask me in the past that they're working with a friend or that they really trust the person that they're working with. I'm sure you have come across this a million times where something might seem nice on, at the outset, someone, you know, a client might seem like your ideal client and then something goes wrong and you didn't have a contract there to protect yourself and you're out hundreds, thousands of dollars. Um, so I love too that you say it kind of protects the relationship as well. Just set some expectations on both sides. Yeah. It doesn't have to be scary. Um, it right. can actually be the opposite. Yeah. And the analogy I use all the time is because I know, especially if you're joining this particular platform, you probably have a propensity towards this, but I love to be organized and make lists. Um, and so you know, if, if you are a person who, I mean, I'm not an organized person, but I love like organizing. <laughs> So if you have a need, <laughs> yeah, so if, <laughs> if you have a propensity to like write things out and, and make lists and, you know, like, like when your house is full of these things, I think that you would really enjoy having a solid contract because the analogy that I, I like to use is um, I don't have any kids, but I imagine that you, um, we have this toy box, right? And so, so the toy box has like toys in it, you know, anything he could want to play with. And when he comes over, it's just toys everywhere, like all over the room, everywhere. And, um, you know, we're like, where's this Lego set? Where's this donkey plush toy? Like this uh, dinosaur toy, whatever it is. And we don't know where anything is. And so that's kind of what our business looks like when we don't have contracts in place or we don't have really good contracts in place. You know, we're, we're relying on emails and text messages and like everything's everywhere. And we don't really know where to go to find the information that we need or our clients don't know where to go and it's just kind of a mess. So instead, it doesn't have to be perfect, but you just need to pick all those toys up, all those messages and emails and everything 
and put it all toy box all in your contract so that you have it once you can always go back and reference that one document you don't have to go and like all over the internet and try to find like a conversation from six or seven twelve months ago um, so you know right. thinking about your contract as a list um, as as something that will build your um, build your business by outlining exactly what it is that you're providing to your clients and then on the other side what your clients are getting out of the relationship right like this is too, you're not just in their money you're providing them with a service that they need that they want right absolutely so what are um when it comes to forming a contract so do you recommend starting from scratch? Do you recommend finding a template? I know you offer templates where now that there's an understanding that yes, in fact, you do need a, a contract always. Where do you start with creating a contract? Yeah, I, I mean, even as a lawyer scratch, I go and I find templates and, um, you know, obviously I know what to put in the templates. I know I have my own checklist right. that I have. Um, that your freelancer or high students get access to that checklist. But, you know, it's it's important not to reinvent the wheel. One, because you'll drive yourself crazy. And two, because you're not an attorney. And so even as attorneys, I'm whenever I have a new con, and not so much anymore because I have this, but when I was first starting out, I went to my attorney friends and I said, hey, here's this agreement that I have, um, you know, or that I want to get. And how do I do this? Um, you know, like what that I could possibly use. And so I used the, the, the templates that they had and then knowing the industry, like understanding things about floral design or graphic design, whatever it is, I and what I thought needed to be there. And then obviously, you know, like when I hear stories or when I see things, I'm like, oh, I need to change the language there or add something. Um, and so with my templates, I'm constantly improving them and, and tweaking them. And so this is whatever you guys decide to do, because I know not everybody can afford um, that kind of investment just yet, but secret not so you're, there's going to be a sale next week. <laughs> um, Black Friday. Awesome. So yeah, if yes. that's, and I just purely do that because I know that people are starting out and they can't afford, um, you know, maybe like a, a $250 investment right off the bat. And so that's just twice a year. I offer them, uh, the opportunity to invest in the business without spending the full amount. So basically, awesome. um, so that's Black Friday next Friday, starting on Black Friday. <laughs> Okay. And I'm not, good to know. I, I'm only telling you, glad you guys are the only it? ones that that heard that from me. You know, I've been hinting about it on social media and stuff, but, but I mean, it's the secret and it's not like, you know, whatever, but, um, you know, whether, whatever, whether it's with me, there's another attorney that I recommend all the time. Her name is Autumn Whit Boyd. She, she's got templates, um, onto legal zoom, but, um, you know, <laughs> just know that it won't be as custom or like close to your industry. Um, or, you know, whatever it is that fits your budget and fits, fits the amount of work that you want to put in, um, find one that works for you is, is what I recommend. And then I even recommend taking it a step further, putting it into an electronic platform. I know we, I was asking you guys about what kind of electronic platform you have, because I think that's really important. Um, and the reason why it's important is because this, this L chat today is all about improving your client experience. And I think there's nothing you can do to kill your client experience faster than to have have a bad board and you know I'm, I'm usually the person that, that's like oh you know like nothing's really bad it's just different but you can have a bad onboarding experience um, you can lose clients mm -hmm. you can um, set them up for failure and just not have a great experience that carries through your relationship and um, you know that's what we want to avoid especially when it's so easy to avoid and so what I mean by that is so you you go out you get your contract again we're adding to it it's not perfect I, I just I really emphasize that because I think professionalism is more important than perfection. So just getting mm -hmm. something that is um, is good for you as a professional is more important than having the, the perfect contract, which doesn't exist. So once you get some kind of template into place, um, getting that into some, some kind of electric platform, just send to your client. Hopefully they can open on their phone and sign it with their finger um, or type their name in, right. which is totally in the United States. That's totally legal. Actually, the court systems are all moving online and encouraging that kind of behavior. Um, so, you know, the only thing that I wouldn't it for is if you're like selling property. 
That's right. not what we're talking about here, though. Um, so <laughs> we're getting a will or a trust or something. Um, but what we're talking about here is client contracts. And in that case, it's, it's important, again, to have something where you can just kind of send it off. Your client can look at it. They can review it. They can sit. They can maybe even make comments on it. Um, and they don't have to, like, download it or print it or send it back to you or, like, worse fax it to you. Like, if you are faxing or requesting a source kind it's time to rethink your client onboarding process because it should be so easy um, nothing should be easier than to book you as a service provider when you send your clients contracts so really using something like 17 hats um, like, can you give them the, the link that you have to 17 hats because that would be awesome I, I think 17 hats yeah. is a great platform um, I, I am a legal consultant for HoneyBook I love HoneyBook they even give you a general services contract that yes. um, was created by an attorney. So anyway, um, there's lots of different options out there for you if, if you do want to use some kind of electronic service provider that I just gave you. They're, <laughs> they're all encompassing. Sorry. So, no, it's, oh, it's cool. It happens at least once. Um, yeah. So um, they will actually do the invoicing. But if you only need a contract, just want to send contracts, um, we're seeing some over here in the comments. Hello, sign. Um, I haven't tried Proposify. Adobe Sign I actually don't like because it's still that they, they, they're they close. They haven't quite gotten it to the point where you can just kind of like ping it back and forth like Hello Sign or um, Bonsai Sign. Yeah, I, I, I think it's added the 17 hats link for you guys if you want. So yeah, yeah. I mean, that, I think that's, that's a hard is moder modernizing your, your onboarding rings with your uh, contract. And I can say too, um, Christina and I had a contract and when she sent it through HoneyBook, you can also pay right after the contract. So um, it was really easy from my point of view to look it over, sign it. It was so quick. It would have been a much bigger hassle and I've worked with people in the past where I have to print it out and then I have to <laughs> scan it in and send it, you know, send it in an email and it just takes so many extra steps. So I love that you say that both from user experience and on my end it's so nice to not have to keep up with paper contracts yeah um i just I have it all in one i just added honey place. my honey book link um that that's an affiliate link awesome. by the way guys like i yeah I minus get, two. yeah but i i would recommend it anyway so um yeah. yes honey book does work in the uk so i 17 hats all of these are just uh all we're talking about here are SaaS systems so software as a service and the software that we're talking about is this client booking software. So, you know, like QuickBooks right. um, is a SaaS and, you know, ConvertKit, all of these kinds of things are all SaaS services and they work everywhere. Right. Yeah. So helpful. And like I said, mine is just free months to 17 hats. <laughs> um, so mine is allegedly money, but, but I've never seen it. So I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Um, but those are both great. And you said DocuSign, HelloSign. Yeah. Um, HelloSign lets them are free contracts per month for free which is great and a really mean beautiful interface so I like HelloSign um, and then DocuSign I think is is a low monthly payment HelloSign too um, I haven't used Bonsai or Bonsai sign but a, a lot of people do like Bonsai sign Bonsai so yeah it's good to have the options and and check those out but definitely if you have a paper contract it might be worth well definitely worth for your client experience um, and just to keep the, everything simple doing it online as well so and we were talking um, yeah. in your course about how easy it is to update once you have your contract um you know typed into your computer and one of these SaaS systems or even a google doc you know you can always go back and update it and it's really really easy because then you can access the most um the most modern version of that contract and uh it's it's always something you can copy and paste which is really nice so just a yeah, little insider it is. tip <laughs> Yes. Um, and you will make updates. It's it's kind of inevitable. Even just changing out the amount that you're paying in the process, <laughs> you're going to make tweaks. But also just learning from trial and error what you need to include in your contract. Right. Um, what clients ask so. for extra stuff? More than they've paid for? That's crazy, yeah. Lauren. <laughs> Imagine that. I know. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, so – now that we've talked about contracts and kind of how to set them up, what are the top things that people don't usually think about including in their contract? 
Yeah, that's a great question. I think I think some of the things they think about including are the number one thing is an example. So if you're always running into a certain situation, an example and tell them how it turns out. You know, like if you're if you find clients are always asking for um, extra hours and not respecting the rate that you've quoted, that only includes a certain amount of hours. Maybe you're a coach or a graphic designer or something like that on retainer. Um, give them an example, like example, you get 10 hours with this package to be used over the next three months. If you go over these hours, mm -hmm. then you will be charged at a rate of whatever my hourly rate is per hour. Um, so for example, yeah. this, this or that or the other thing, use examples of real life things that have happened. They don't have to be super detailed, like, you know, you are named Heidi and you do this thing anyway, just generically it doesn't have to be like you're exposing your past right. clients but um, examples are really really helpful it helps humanize the document so your your clients trust you more um, and they, they can right. probably read between the lines and see that this is a situation that's happened before and hopefully have respect and appreciate that you're taking care um, to avoid that situation from occurring again from both sides of the coin so I think examples are the number one thing that people leave out of their contract because they want they want it to be this like very formal legal document. And if we have an example, mm -hmm. that's that's weird. And and the new school of contract drafting actually includes a lot of examples. We were encouraged in law school. Um, I was fortunate to study with the lady that actually wrote the book on contract drafting that's used in every law school, awesome. almost every law school. So yeah, it's she encourages everybody to use examples in their contract and with that where it's like all right, what's really going on here? Um, and just breaking it down in layman's terms and, and real life situations. That's number one. Yeah, um, I love that. And I wouldn't have even thought to do that because like you said, with contracts, you, it's so much legalese, you know, legal terms. And, um, but that is so helpful. And, and I would think from the client perspective, they would appreciate that, that you're breaking it down because it might not be so clear for them. So yeah, um, I would say yeah, that's the that's number awesome. two mistake is that, you know, using legalese might sound cool, but if you if a client comes to you and they ask you, what does this mean? And you can't explain it. That doesn't look good. That doesn't look like a professional. Right. Um, so, you know, it it might be if, if you're advanced enough to have somebody that you can like a lawyer or somebody that you can pay for a couple hours to go through your contract with you or update your contract. Um, it might just mean some <laughs> Googling, um, hopefully not frantically. You know, you do it before a client has these questions. Um, right. Changing the language, but I like to stay away from legalese. So, for example, anytime I find myself writing herein, as in, you know, we will address these concerns as contained herein, uh, I change it to in this agreement. So, anytime mm -hmm. I'm like, okay, follow the payment plan as herein, instead, it's follow the payment plan as set forth in this agreement. And so, that's just easier for people to understand. And so, if you don't have a legal background, hopefully, you're not like, thinking in legal use and converting yeah. um, translating. I don't normally think here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I mean, yeah. It, it might just be a simple thing where you you break it down and put it in language that you understand. So when a client has a question, you can competently and confidently answer that question for them. Yeah, that's helpful. And Irene said that Smashing Magazine has some examples. So if anybody has that um, link and wants to add it in here of you know, breaking terms down, that would be really helpful. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I've heard it's cool. But I read yeah, if you haven't written a blog post on that already, Christina, there's a blog post idea. About examples and contracts? Yeah. All right, I'm writing it. it down. I'll write one for you guys. I can't promise when it'll come out, but. <laughs> yeah, I'm just out there. I'm always like on the lookout for blog post ideas, so. Sure, I know. Yeah. <laughs> so we said um, using legalese, and also using examples, uh, or not using legal terms, but breaking it down, and then using examples. Um, what are some more things that people don't think about including in their contract? Yeah, so the thing that I would say people don't think about including is um, actual breakdowns of plan services, payment plans, fees. It's really, really helpful for me to see something where it says, um, maybe I can provide you with an example of this somewhere, but Basically, when it says um, fee, $500 due by 
July 4th or whatever, 2018, right. um, you know, whatever it is, is and then just having a chart. So payment number one costs this much due by this date. Um, and then using exact dates and exact numbers. And that's really helpful because it's, it's much easier to look at something like that in a chart form um, than it is to say in a paragraph, first of all, which is just for our brains harder to read anyway. Um, mm -hmm. And then to say, uh, wait, okay, 30 days, the first date of this, whatever, it, it's so much harder to try to calculate it out days. And then, you know, is that business days? Is that calendar days? Is it a leap year? Like whatever's going on, right. just write the dates, write the numbers um, and try, just try to make it as, as simple to understand as possible. And, and that, that will help your clients, obviously. Um, the, the goal of this, you know, we're talking really in depth about our contracts, but like the goal of all this is to have a great experience with your clients. So they go out and refer you to a million people and you have more clients. Um, and so, right. you know, keep in mind, like when they look at something, make it easy. You know, you read blog posts that have section headings. So, you know, you have section headings in your contract. You just make it easy to read. And so the third one, I would say is just like make things really, really easy. If, if it doesn't, if it's not intuitive to you to look at a certain section and find something, um, then make it, oh, if, if it makes more sense to you to have a certain heading somewhere to break a paragraph up into two different contravisions, it doesn't change the contract. It just changes how right. you, how easily you can reference it. So I would say, I would say the third mistake or thing that, that you could easily improve is just making things really simple by having those ex dates, exact charts. Um, you, know, you can do it with services too, where you have like 10 hours of coaching provided by date or, um, you know, 10 hours of coaching and then everything else that's included, access course modules, access to me via email, Facebook group, right. um, you know, kind of like you might even see on a sales page of a course or something. Right. Just spelling it out really clearly. I know too, I wouldn't want to read a paragraph of when due dates are having it in a chart would be so much easier. Yeah. <laughs> but I don't normally think about charts and contracts because again, we have in our mind, I guess, how it's been done in the past or I don't know. We have these preconceived notions about contracts. So it's helpful to know that yes, in fact, you can have a chart or a table in there. Um, if it makes it easier to understand because that's, I mean, again, all a contract is, is an agreement. And so if you don't know what you're agreeing to, then do you really have an agreement? Is it, that's where problems creep in. Um, so if you can, right. if you understand what you're on either side of the table, um, it, it's just, it's a better situation all around. Yeah. So speaking of these things to include in your contract, how can your clients benefit from your contract? How can you use it as a selling point even? Um, we've mentioned here and there how it improves the experience, but what are some benefits, some clear benefits? Yeah, definitely. I love that you uh, asked how it can even be used as a selling point. And I think the number one thing, and we've talked about this before, is that it makes you look professional when you get off the phone. You can say, I have my contract, and you send it to them right away. You're not getting on scrambling for a contract and sending it to them forever later. Or, um, you know, by that point, they've already booked some other service provider or whatever's happening. Clients are just like, Yes, they want things fast. And so if, if you can give it to them really quickly, that, that shows you're professional. And then when it shows up on their doorstep right. or in their inbox or whatever it looks like, um, hopefully not on their doorstep, but when it shows up in their inbox and, uh, you know, they're, they're able to take a look at it, sign, and it's, it's not just um, this one little pager, okay, you pay me this, I give you that, cool, let's sign it, bye. Um, but actually an entire agreement like I said, the toy box that has everything in it. So, you know, the cancel, what happens in the event of a cancellation, you know, if you're a photographer, what if there's like a weather delay, if there's any kind of like situation where the client can what happens, all of the like what ifs are taken care of as best as possible. Um, that, that gives the client a lot of confidence in you as a service provider because they don't necessarily understand what it is that you're doing for them. So the more that you can, kind of take them by the hand and walk them along with you, show them this is what I do, I've done this before, even if you haven't, and you have a great client contract that shows, that that kind of alludes to the fact that you've done this before because you have whatever goals or you have charts or you just know what you're talking about, you know what you're doing with them. 
Um, you can yeah. point that out. And then I think the last way that you could really use it as even a selling point is in the presentation. And that's why I think these electronic companies are so important. Because we take it for granted as online service providers that everybody is using this and used to this kind of stuff. But I wouldn't, I, I can't even tell you how many PDF contracts that I get. And it just drives me crazy because there's such good cheap solutions out there, right? Um, and when you are the service provider who is sending your client a contract that they can read immediately and they can then, um, you know, highlight things or comment on it right on their phone when they're out with their friends at a coffee shop, whatever, um, and they can send it back to you signed with their finger, you stand out from the competition who sent it to them in a PDF or, you know, said, I'm going to send you the contract and spent the evening like hogging some like free website and, right. um, or something and then they get it in a PDF and it has typos or whatever. So when you can streamline it to just be able to send immediately and then through one of these platforms, um, it, it gives your clients a lot of confidence that you are not only a competent service provider, but that you also are aware of what the experience is like for them and that you can, you, you are going to, the, the illusion or uh, the assumption at that point then is that, wow, if she's this organized and this on top of it this early in the game, I can't wait to see what she does to my whatever floral design, my website, my right. wedding. So I think, you know, those are all the ways that you can use your client contrails tool. I love that. And I'm, I'm always saying this, and I probably sound like a broken record to those who've been reading the blog lately and Ellen Company newsletters, <laughs> but the, the most important thing in any business, and it doesn't come overnight, is trust. Um, people have to trust you in order to buy from you, whether it's booking your services or buying your product. They want to know that if they're putting their money there, that they're going to be well taken care of. And I think that it comes at the very beginning. Your contract, you send it right before someone pays. The money is almost right there. It's the it's the very last thing they probably see before they pay the invoice for the first payment or whatever it is. Um, and so for you to look professional and for you to look like you've thought through every possible outcome, that you've done this before, it shows them that they're in good hands. Um, I think some people shy away from having a smaller or from having a long contract because they think it's going to overwhelm people. <laughs> and I thought that at first I yeah. worked with a lawyer. He drafted up a contract. I was like, Oh man, um, are they going to want to read through all of these pages? And in fact, I found that they, they saw me as more of a professional that I had taken those steps to think through every possible scenario that not only I was covered, but they were covered. Right. Um, if I were to cancel or something like that. So I think that the trust component and everything that you've said, taking care of covering your bases um, goes a really, really long way with people. So yeah, my two cents. Yeah. Oh, that's no, I, I love it. Um, yeah. And, and I'm just looking down here at the comments, people are having really good questions. It looks like um, they asked them a little earlier and they so I, I would encourage all of you guys to ask questions today. We have a couple more minutes left that we're yeah. going to go through some of these. Absolutely. I'm stealing yeah. your thumb. Really Lauren. quickly. <laughs> no, you're good. Yeah, I'm go glad for that it. you're the, question? of the, co the questions you have. Um, before we dive into those really quickly, what about the people who are tuning in right now and they don't necessarily have services, but they have products? That's a great question. What do question. you need if you only have a product-based business? That's such before a great we jump question. I love this. Okay, yeah. So no matter who you are, if you have a website, and um, it's, it's a little, if you don't have a website, which I'm going to assume in 2016 that everybody has websites. So forgive Probably. me. Um, but if you are a product based business, you have a website, you have what's called, and all of you, even service providers should have this, but it's called a terms and conditions this page. And usually, Christina. I'm what? sorry to, so for some reason, your video disappeared. I don't know if you hover over it and click your video or, or whatever it is, but I want to see your pretty face. Sorry to cut you off. Didn't mean to do that. So I toggled. We're issue. waiting for Christina to reconnect. There you are. Okay. It's working. Sorry about that. <laughs> okay. No, I, I think it, <laughs> maybe I scrolled down to the questions or something. Um, yeah. So oh, for you, for those of you with product-based businesses, you have what's called a, a terms and conditions or privacy policy page. And that's essentially the contract that 
people using your website um, are agreeing to. So when they continue to use your website, they're agreeing to whatever you set forth there. Now you can say whatever you want, as long as it's true, you're not going to get in trouble with um, the FTC here in America. Right. America or whatever the is in your country. So for example, you know, if you're selling everybody's information that comes to your website, you can say that and it's fine. If you say that you're not selling it and you are, then, you know, you're going to get in trouble. But um, where it applies in this situation is if you have these terms and conditions of use and you sell products, um, whether they're digital or physical, what you can do is you can just tell them exactly what, what you know, like if you buy something and you want to refund here's our policy and if you go to major retailers if you go to like the walmarts and um the, the uh i don't know in europe has one i you know we have a lot of europeans on but you know if, if you go to them or h&m you know like h&m is a worldwide brand if you go to h&m's website and you go, go and look at their terms and conditions it says you can return your merchandise within this amount of time um if your merchandise arrives damaged this is what you can do if you aren't unsatisfied here's what happens and it's mm -hmm. it's the same thing as have not exactly the same thing as having a client service agreement but it's very similar in that you know by placing an order we assume that you've read these terms and conditions that we've so clearly laid out on our website i like to take it a step further because um, with digital products it's really difficult to protect yourself against chargebacks um, so hopefully none of you have done this because that's not cool but um, right. you know, chargebacks. If you're not aware of it, is when you you place an order for something online, and then you um, and sometimes this does happen. Like if someone took a card and they they used it fraudulently for something, uh, what you can do is you can call your credit card company and say this this is a charge that I didn't make. I want my money back, or you know I or I ordered from this retailer it never came. They're not responding. Um, you know shady site or something I don't know what happened but they're not sending you merchandise you get your money back through your your um, credit card company and it's it's interesting because with product-based businesses obviously you can show that, that it's been shipped but with digital it's a little harder and so one step that I've you have to show that they've actually received the product somehow so maybe having an email conversation with them um, on my website I have actually a box that you have to check that you agree this isn't legal advice when you download my digital products um, and you're agreeing to my terms and conditions, so you've read them. I have a link to my terms and conditions, and that um, you know you're you're if if you're unsatisfied, you're going to contact me, not initiate a chargeback before you email me first, because I'm you know I'm going to take care of you. Don't worry. Um, <laughs> so you know those are the things that you could do when you're selling digital or physical products, and then finally, like in person, if you're only doing craft shows or pop up markets, something like that. It's really hard to have anything, but I mean, you do have a square reader, hopefully, stripe reader, you know, whatever right. it is that you're charging their credit cards with. And so there are certain protections in place, um, you know, through the readers. And so you should just read the, the terms and conditions of the contract you have with those readers protected on some ends. But, you know, in-person sales like that are are really a lot more different. not really a contract other than, you know, a pure exchange of, of money for goods. Right. So for for product based businesses who are looking at creating terms and conditions, do you have templates for those as well? I do. That's actually my best selling template is um, awesome. my terms and conditions template. So good. To know. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. It's it's um, definitely a plug and play. You just copy and paste and read it. Make sure it actually applies to your business, because like I said, that's important. You can't just put something up there. And if you're not following that, and, you know, but. Um, but yeah, for the most part, it's it's pretty. It fits. It's a one size fits all. Awesome. Good to know. All right, are you ready to tackle some of these questions? Yeah, I think they're really okay. great questions. I don't know if I can I scroll down I'm I'm them them as much as I could, but um, all right. So we're going to start with Rachel's question. She says, "What if I put the due dates on a contract, and after signing it and paying the first payment, a client said that we need to move the due dates for the second and third payment because she can pay each of them two weeks later." after a due date. Is this contract still valid or do I need to create a second contract for remaining payments? Yeah, Good this question. is a great question. Um, just so you guys all know, I hope you all know this, this isn't legal advice. I'm not working with you one on one. Um, and, and that's so you know your businesses, right? Like that right. would just be totally negligent of me to say, you should definitely do this. So these are really generic answers. Um, obviously, if you have a legal question, talk to a lawyer, especially if you're in a different jurisdiction than the US. But um, yeah, this is definitely something that happens a lot, right? Like a client can't pay or they need like an extended payment plan. Um, you know, they want to buy more hours from you, which is a great problem to have. And, and the mistake that I see a lot of people 
people make is they send a whole new contract and that's fine, but that's kind of mm -hmm. onerous. And again, today we're talking all about the client experience and that's not, to me, that's not the best experience they could have. And so for example, in all my templates, I just have a little amendment thing that in writing via email or, you know, old school, if you want to send a letter or whatever um, you know you're out to dinner with somebody you just want to write it down on a piece of paper send it to each other um, right take a picture of it via email whatever it looks like um, just how the amendment which is the change is in writing and conveyed to both people and so that becomes a part of the contract with both of uh, the parties or if there's more than that all of the parties uh, agreement and and uh, permission so that's as simple as it gets. It's just, you know, purely, okay, I would like to buy, buy 10 extra coaching hours, or I would like to buy, um, you know, actually, I didn't think I needed a whole brand redesign. I thought I just, but I actually want the whole thing. thing. Well, great. You know, and you just amend the contract um, in writing to make sure that's, that's a part of it. And so whether you are, um, you can do that I, I, probably in 17 hats pretty easily, or if you just want to include that in an email somehow, um, just make sure that it's in writing and that it's included. Um, but I think if, uh, you know, and, and that's fine, if, if they're just moving it the two weeks, then that doesn't seem like a big deal. But, you know, if this is a problem that's going on a lot, here's a good example, and you could put the example in the contract. And so, mm -hmm. for example, in my templates, I just say, if you miss a payment deadline, everything becomes, pay you know, due and payable. You know months and months and months in advance when your payments are due. Um, so, you know, I just, I can't take that risk with you as a client. Sorry. So, you know, don't miss your payment deadlines. I give you a grace period after that grace okay. period passed, everything's due. So those are some solutions in that situation. That's a good rule of thumb. And just to clarify, do they need to sign that amendment? Right. So it, it depends on the contract that you have. Um, okay. if, if you have a card that doesn't say anything about whether amendments can be made, contract is appropriate in that situation. Okay. But if you have a contract and it says that amendments can be made by writing, which is pretty standard, um, then you just need it in writing somehow. So, okay. you know, so they don't even just need to sign that amendment. Right. Like there's just an email okay. as long as both of you know what the situation is going forward. Um, and then as far as organizing that, again, the toy box thing, like I like to put it back in toy box, figure out a way to get that back in the contract. So, you know, six months from now when you've got you know it's somewhere, you know, make sure it's somewhere where you can go back and reference it, you know, whether that's a Dropbox folder or in 17 hats or whatever that looks like for you. Awesome. That's just a matter of organization at that point, though. So. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> I hope that was helpful for you, Rachel. I know that was helpful for me. So, <laughs> thank you, Christina. Sure. All right. Jennifer says, is it okay to combine the information on a contract into your proposal or is that too overwhelming for clients? I do that. I love that. I want to give them everything all at once um, so that they can, they can make a decision. Um, I, I'm not, like I said, I am not out to ever take anyone's money. And I believe, um, obviously I'm an attorney, but I also do business strategy. And so even when I'm just doing my consulting, it's, it's never out to take someone's money. It's always there. Oh, Lauren, I lost your video. Oh no. Am I think I, everybody else is still there. So I'm going to keep going. But, um, yeah, I, I think You're it's good. important to make sure that when, um, let me see, where is this question? I lost my train of thought when I lost Lauren. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Sorry. <laughs> That's um, okay. Can you ask the question one more time? So having just... the contract and the the same information. Oh, right, right, right. Can you see me again, yes. by the way? Yeah, I can okay. see you again. And um, awesome. yeah, so I, I, again, I like to send everything all at once because like I said, I, I'm out to provide a service, not to just be like the money monster over here. And so I. I like people to have any to make that decision and make an informed decision because I do believe that you as the client in whatever capacity that is, you have the most information about your, your situation, the finance of your situation, the feelings of your situation. Mm -hmm. um, and so you are in the best position to make decisions for yourself. And I would like you to have a full picture of everything, um, including the terms of my agreement, because sometimes I mean, I, I just, my, my partner, he just got an agreement for um, an SEO contract and it was like very one-sided and not mm -hmm. okay. And if he had just gotten the proposal and not the actual agreement too, it would, it maybe would have been a different situation where it was a very bad situation on both sides, but because he got the contract and could make that informed decision, he decided not to work with that service provider. Um, and so, you know, in that case, it was, it was a pretty bad contract, but mm -hmm. um 
you know. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I think it's good to give everybody everything that you can all at once. Um, one thing that I will say that a lot of people don't do, and I don't know if you do this, Lauren, but I like to jump on the phone with people before that happens. I think that's way more important than, you know, like, do I sign the contract? Do I not? I think it's really important to have a call with someone and decide if they're a good fit for you and vice versa to give them yeah. that opportunity. I and always, at that point, oh, yeah, sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt you. Yeah, no, at, at that point, I don't even think it's an issue. You know, I don't think it's going to make a difference to them whether you send them or not at that, that moment. So, yeah, I always jump on a call with them, go over the entire process, what's included, um, kind of go over the ins and outs of the contract ahead of time so that when yeah. I send them the contract, it's nothing new. And yes. I send them the contract yeah. as soon as we get off the phone. So just like right. Christina said, for improving your client experience, as soon as we get off the phone, I say, I'll send over my, or on the phone, I say, as soon as we get off, I'll send you my contract. Feel free to look it over. Let me know if you have any questions. Once it's signed, I'll see, send you the invoice and you'll be booked. So just yes. continuing to go over these things with them so that it's very clear exactly what they're getting. So yeah, I, I agree, Christina. I think having the information in both places is actually um, a good thing. I don't think that's too overwhelming. And if it is too overwhelming for them, I don't know. I don't think it sounds like you need to have more phone conversations with them or yeah. um, maybe change the marketing messaging. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. A great question, Jennifer. Um, Mariah says, do I have to get my client or rather, do I have to get my contract looked over by a lawyer? What can I change about it without having a lawyer confirm that it's still good? It's a good question. That is a question. It's, it's honestly a matter of where you're at in your business, right? So if, if you are just starting, and this is, it's funny because a lot of people who are just starting out are like, I want to do everything right from the start. I'm going to go to a lawyer. I'm going to do this. But I mean, and this is coming from a lawyer, but when you're just starting out, there's so many other better places to put your money as an investment than a lawyer. I think, um, you know, I, again, we got it here, but like insurance, you know, like that's probably more valuable than having a lawyer look at your contract. Um, just yeah. having some kind of policy in place. So if things go wrong, you know, which accidents happen, there's, there's something there. And so it's, it, again, you are the person who knows your, um, you know, like your risk level, how, how risk averse you are. So if you're very yeah. risk averse and you have the financials to have a lawyer look at it, that's probably a great investment. But if you are, um, if you're just starting out and, and you don't have a lot, then it's, you know, kind of like a wait and see approach and, and adding to your own contract and then budgeting for the attorney fees to look over your contract or in the alternative, finding these great attorney drafted templates, again, whether they're mine or someone else's, like there's tons of them out there at this point, um, you know, whatever works for you. And then using that going forward um, and then adding as the situations arise, you know, if you, if you got like a general contract, adding that. And then if you're, if you're like two or three years into business, you, you, like, I don't say this to be mean, but you really should in a place where if you wanted a lawyer to look at your contracts, you could afford that. Mm -hmm. um, and so, you know, making like maybe a thousand dollar investment to have them look at it. Or if things have been going really well and you've kind of, you know, done the, oh, I should have thought of that. I should have thought of that. And you have all that kind of stuff in your contract. You feel good about it. Then you probably are in a situation where you don't need an attorney to look at it, where you're, you're probably in a situation situation where you know even more what's going on and um, the pitfalls and the problems that you could possibly have and the attorney's just maybe you, you know you, you could hire her for an hour to just kind of add some things in or clarify some things or clear up some ambiguities so I, I, I think and this is the worst answer ever but it really, really depends and mm -hmm. uh, it depends again on, on how much risk you're willing to accept in your business um, and again yeah. if you're if you're really risk averse that that liability Ability policy to choose between the two because of financial reasons. It's, it's probably I would say the 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 if I were starting a business, what I would do is I would get a contract template, and I would get an insurance policy. Yeah, that's I, that's great advice. Yeah, if I could only afford one of those, I would I would get the one that I could afford. Yeah. So I, and two from my experience, I started off with a template. Um, my business started to change a little bit and I knew I needed other things added on to my contract. Um, 
And so I hired a lawyer for privacy policy and, and all of those things. But, um, and I'd be interested to hear your take on this, Christina, too. But we, and specifically Jake, I can't take credit for this, when we were researching yeah. lawyers in sure. our area, um, he found one that worked specifically with creative online businesses. So he was familiar with what I would need right. in my contract. I've talked yeah. to other people. Um, uh, yeah, I was, I'm not going to name names, but other people in the industry who have worked with lawyers and the lawyer has actually come to their location and they explained exactly what they did. And when it came time to get a contract, that he didn't really under, have an understanding of what they did. I guess he didn't really listen all that well. So if you do reach out to a lawyer, it might be helpful to look for someone who has experience in this area because creative online businesses look different than, um, than other businesses. So do you have, would you add to that? Is that valid advice, wisdom? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> there's, a reason, there's a reason why I filled up with clients super quickly and it's because you know, I can talk to you about styled shoots. I can talk to you about nibs and inks and, um, you know, like gouache paint and all that. Like, I think there's, right. there's just, it, there's a nuance to it that a lot of attorneys won't be able to provide. Um, and I'm not saying that cause I'm like the best ever. I, I don't think that, but, um, yes. no, I, I do. I think it's important to find somebody that you connect with. And that's the important thing because if, if, um, if you're just generically searching for an attorney, I have a feeling a line is via Google searches. Um, from a website called Avo, where attorneys can actually pay to get better ratings and rankings. Um, and right. even on a Google search, the people that show up first are probably paying a lot of money to SEO companies and not so involved in their communities or, you know, the businesses that their clients have. Um, and so, you know, maybe looking on like the fifth or sixth page of Google um, and just, again, doing free consultations. If a lawyer won't offer you a free consultation, I wouldn't, I mean, 10, 20 minutes of my time to get to know somebody um, right. that's about to invest thousands of dollars with me. That's, that's fine with me. And it should be fine for the attorney that you choose. I, I really believe that. And um, mm -hmm. I think that's a good place to make those connections and even decide if it's something that you need. You might talk to an attorney and um, there's plenty of people I talk to and I'm like, hey, you don't need me yet. Like come back to me in six months or um, you actually need an accountant or something else. So just finding somebody that you connect with. And the only way to do that is, is on the phone. So, yeah. um, you know, ask them questions about what they do and, and talk about what you, what you do, and then see if, if they can mirror that language to let you know, they also understand what it is that, that you're talking about, because, mm -hmm. you know, there's, there's just things that happen, um, in your business. So for example, I know we're over time, don't kill me anymore, yeah. but, okay. uh, yeah, no, I, I like there's things that happen like with the dial shoot. If I didn't know that the florist is always the person footing the bill for that shoot and everybody else is like bearing anything financially, I would I would not be able to write that contract. So I have a styled shoot contract. And the reason I'm able to do that is because I know it work. Like I know that it usually at the end of the day, like everybody's thinking who's going to publish this. I don't know who's going to, I'm, I, you said you'd publish this, but I paid up for all the florals and, you know, but I contributed the cake, but I did the photography. And so it's it, like things like that. If you don't understand what's actually going on, or, you know, if you just tried to explain even what a styled shoot is to most attorneys, they'd be like, why, what is the, pro yeah. what? Um, <laughs> so just, you know, finding somebody. And if, if you as, as the client of an attorney, um, are even willing to take the steps necessarily necessary, excuse me, um, to even teach that attorney a little bit or, or give them some articles that they could read. Um, and then hopefully they don't charge you for like learning about your business, but still, yeah. um, just knowing that, that you might have to do a little bit of education that you find act with first. Yeah. With, um, our attorney, I gave him access to the library and e-courses and, um, everything so that he would have a good understanding of, of what it looked like. And I think that was really helpful. Um, I lost your video again, Christina. I'm sorry. Oh, I um, happening. no, you're fine. It's reconnecting. So you're good. Okay. <laughs> there we go. Um, but we had some other questions that that went unanswered, but I would encourage you all to go to Christina's site. Um, and there's also a link. You may have seen it already underneath here. It says, learn how to legalize your biz for free. Um, Christina, can you tell them about that link and what they can access if they follow it? 
Yeah, I'm, I mean, obviously I, I love the creative community and I want to encourage everybody to be in business um, that wants to be for themselves. And one way that I'm able to do that is by sharing what I know about creating a business because it's not inherent. Um, it's not like knowledge that was out there when I was looking to create my first business in, in Lidge and I distinctly remember that. So I wrote down everything um, that can get you started in a book and uh, you can get that book totally for free just by clicking that link and it'll it'll walk you through the steps of legalizing your business um, when you're just getting started or you know maybe if you haven't done that yet so awesome thank you for providing that yeah it's such of a good course. <laughs> and for you all if you go to that link it's um, christinascalera.com slash free book but then once you do get the free book go back to her blog and look through the posts it is so incredibly helpful Christina also has a podcast you want to tell them about that before we hop off sure yeah if you guys learn this and uh, we talk to a lot of creative professionals who are a little, a little bit further along well, we've got to share some really interesting stuff um, we her interview is coming out in December, but like Emily Lay shared some stories that she's never shared before, which was awesome. cool. Um, she has a simplified planner. So yeah, if, if you just want to like kind of get that behind the, the scenes peek and be like, how did she do that? Um, we have the creative empire podcast. So awesome. Thanks, Lauren. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. I thought I'd put that out there as well. So many good resources. Yeah. Um, thank you so much, Christina, for sharing your wisdom with us. It, the hour flew by. So I, I know, I know. I could stay on here forever. I, I love talking to you guys. And thank you so much, Lauren. I really appreciate Absolutely. it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And like I said, y'all, go visit um, Christina's site, www.christinasclare. I don't know why I said www. That doesn't even apply anymore. Um, but y'all be sure to check that out. Um, and if you enjoyed this L chat, um, it's taking place every other week from now until the end of 2016. In 2017, we're going to pick back up. Um, to every week. So um, a lot of just helpful information for y'all as creative entrepreneurs on different topics each week. Um, so if you enjoy following along and you want to see past L chats and stay up to date on upcoming L chats, you can go to my account. Um, I think my little circle bubble um, with my face on it is somewhere around here um, when y'all signed up. If you click on it, you can follow along with my Crowdcast account, and that way you'll know any new time um, an L chat is coming up, or you can access all my previous L chats too. So be sure to do that. Um, the next one, I'm actually having one of my coaching clients come on. She has started a six-figure Etsy business, multiple six-figure Etsy business, and she's going to be sharing all of her secrets. Her name's Morgan Neald, and I'm really excited about that one. So that That'll be two weeks from now, um, always on a Thursday at 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So again, thank you, Christina, for joining us. I hope you all have a great rest of your week, and I hope to see you in another L Chat soon. Bye, Bye guys. guys.